Here we. The Radio Wemo Breakfast. Let's talk fair trade fortnight because it kicked off on uh, Saturday. Um, two weeks where you can um, start thinking about where you're spending your money and um, whether or not uh, your money is being spent ethically. To talk with us more about this is the CEO of Fair Trade New Zealand. It is uh, Steve Knapp. G'day there, Steve. Hi, Mo. Nice to see you once again. Uh, we've been chatting about this for the past, um, we were just saying off here, for the past few years. Um, what, have we made some inroads? Are, are, are we getting better at um, getting the money through to the um, to the producers and um, getting them a better deal than ever before? Yeah, I mean, there's been some fantastic support for fair trade over the last few years. Uh, sales of fair trade products in uh, in New Zealand have, have grown dramatically, and uh, over thirty million um, dollars a year market now retail market in New Zealand. So, I mean, that's phenomenal growth over the over the last few years. Uh, it started with coffee, and now it's coffee, tea, and uh, uh, even cotton t-shirts and, and bananas now in the in the supermarkets. And, and uh, sports balls, I just saw on the list. Sports balls as well, yeah. Well, what, yeah. what kind of sports balls? Well, sports balls that have uh, been made in Pakistan. Uh, they're made in factories with um, guaranteed no child labour. The uh, the workers get paid a fair price and uh, and premiums etc. for local local uh, soccer. investment. Soccer. Soccer balls and uh, your more traditional rugby balls. Rugby balls, well. yeah. Probably not tennis balls. <laughs> no tennis balls yet. I haven't seen any tennis balls. But that's pretty good. I, I just, so that's so the the range of goods is expanding. Yeah, the range of products is growing, and uh, I mean it's a it's a really easy thing for people to do to to support fair trade. And you know we we've, we've got two key messages this year that fair trade products are, are more available than they ever have been before. So they're really easy for people to buy. And uh, there's a real impact and a real change to people's lives in uh, countries much poorer than our own. And one thing I guess you guys have been concentrating on is getting that logo on fair trade products so that people can identify them. Yeah, well, the logo is very important. I mean, when you see the logo on a, on a fair trade product, then you know that that product has met international fair trade standards along the whole supply chain. So, you know, you see that logo on, on coffee, you know that coffee farmers in, in PNG or Colombia are getting a better deal. You, you see it on a, on a cotton T-shirt, and you know that the cotton farmers in, uh, in India are getting a better deal, yeah. similarly with tea. I, mean, I, I know coffee and tea and, and chocolate are the classic kind of fair trade products, and uh, occasionally it comes back up in the news, oh, you know, this, this certain area of farmers isn't doing so well, or they haven't been you know, getting the right amount of money, or the, there's been some dodgy goings-on, um, but then the camera's go away again, and I guess that is still happening. Where are we at at the moment around the world with fair trade coffee and, and tea and, 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 and um, chocolate? I know that's a big question, <laughs> but is it, you know, are things getting well, better overall? Uh, I mean, fair trade is, is, is still a very small percentage of, uh, of, the, of the, you know, the huge size of, of international trade. So, mm. I mean, the, the more people that buy fair trade, then, then the more we can, uh, you know, the more support and the more benefits that go to people in, uh, in developing countries. But, I mean, the fair trade as a, as a market is, is growing. I mean, more than 30 million euros in, uh, in premiums went to producer organisations around the world last year. And you know that sort of money makes a it makes a real difference to people's lives. And I was uh, I was lucky enough to visit Ghana last year, and uh, and I went to a couple of uh, villages where they where they grow fair trade cocoa. And I think you know the the thing that that really struck me was the was the pride of the of the people there. You know they were they were really proud to be cocoa farmers. They yeah. were they were really proud to be part of the the fair trade cooperative that they uh, that they that they sold their their cocoa into. And they were really proud to show us all the things that they'd bought with their with their fair trade premiums. You know, they had a they had a water well that they'd built just outside the village, so they had access to to fresh water now, which they didn't have before. They'd um, they'd built a small schoolhouse for the for the kids in mm. the, in the village, and uh, they'd um, they, they'd bought an ambulance. You know, and a, not an ambulance like you and I think of an ambulance, but it was a, you know it was a, it was a vehicle that they yeah, could a flatbed get people, truck. Yeah, yeah, right. They could get people to the uh, yeah. to the local hospital when they were sick, and you know they'd never had those things before. Yeah, but that that real sense of pride that they'd they'd done it for themselves, and and they'd bought those things through through their hard work and the cocoa that they'd sold. Is there any way can you see in the future that we're going to absolutely be able to squeeze the dodgy middlemen out of the market? Uh, I mean, very hard to say. I mean, f uh, trade is international trade is such a such a complex thing, and you know, product moves around the world, and you only have to look at in the supermarket where some of the things you buy come from. You know, they come from all over the world, and and you know, even the clothes you wear, the 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 cotton's grown in one place, the spinning's done in another place, mm. the the dyeing's done in another place. 
So they're, they're quite complex supply chains. But, I mean, what, with fair trade, what we try to do is, is simplify those supply chains, try and make that connection stronger between the, the consumer and the, and the farmer so people have a better idea where things have come from they can see who's getting paid in the supply chain. They, they know that things are being produced in, a, in an ethical and a sustainable way. Mm. Fair trade bananas are quite new to the market, and they made up 2% of all bananas sold in New Zealand last year. Uh, where are they coming from? Uh, the, the fair trade bananas are, are coming from Ecuador. Um, I remember, actually, we, we talked about fair trade bananas maybe two years ago, yeah. was it? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, fair trade bananas were, were, a, were a bit of a pipe dream at the time. And, yeah. you know, we were... We were chatting about it, and uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, two years on, you know, we, I'm sure you're buying your fair trade bananas every week. I'm buying my fair trade bananas every week. I actually uh, haven't. I haven't been buying any banana. I used to buy bananas all the time. I haven't bought any bananas, um, mainly because I'm just aware of the, the fact that they just don't come from here. You know what I mean? Like, I'm now more into buying more local stuff. Right. I mean, there's stuff that like I have to have, like coffee and chocolate and stuff. And bananas. But 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 I don't I don't have to have bananas. And right. I'm just I just um think about the, the fact that they've travelled so far and they grew yeah. somewhere else and there's all the food miles that go on them yeah. as well. That's my choice. Sure, yeah. But, yeah. But, In, interesting that you have to have coffee but you know I have do to have, have to have bananas. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know, I mean I I'm 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 the same. I I you know, I support locally grown produce. Yeah. Uh but if if things have to be imported into New Zealand, yeah. then they should be imported as well mm. trade. And, and, you know, bananas is one of those Agreed. things. Coffee is imported. Mm. Tea is, is imported. Um, you know, seed cotton is, is imported. So, you know, let, let's import those things as fair trade and let's make sure that the people who are growing those products are, are getting a good deal. And do you know much about the state of um, banana growing as a whole? I mean, it was 10 years ago they said that, that bananas only had 10 years um, to go because the, there was some kind of fungus that was going to wipe them all out. Have you heard anything about <laughs> the state well, of banana I, growing? I think the uh, I think the industry is still going strong. I mean, there's there's a couple of very big companies that that dominate the the banana market. Yeah. I mean, what's uh, what, what's good to see is that the the fair trade bananas that are that are coming into New Zealand, it's uh, it's a small uh, cooperative of um, you know small small farmers in in Ecuador called El Guabo. Uh, you know, they they farm one or two hectares. Uh, and they're and they're you know they're working in the international market and they're they're exporting their bananas all over the world, including to New Zealand. Mm. And and then at this end of the supply chain, it's a it's a small Kiwi company called uh, All Good, who are who are importing the bananas and and marketing them in New Zealand. And I and I think you know it's that it's that connection of uh, of a small business in New Zealand working with a small business in Ecuador. Which is uh, which is really good to see, and you know that's the way we like to see fair trade working. Maybe we might see different coloured bananas coming through as well. What not yellow ones? Not yellow ones. I yeah. see green ones occasionally. But yeah, well, yeah. that's that's the I guess the but, but there's pur- there's meant to be purple ones. There's meant to be a whole in fact wide range of colours of bananas. But it was those big companies that you were just talking about that decided that it was going to be that was the one that the consumers liked. True. Yeah, there there are a number of different different varieties, and you know mainly we get. Uh, what's called a Cavendish uh, Cavendish banana here, mm. but I mean you, you only have to go to the Pacific Islands and you get those little, you know, beautiful little sweet bananas. And uh, wouldn't it be great to see yeah. those coming into New Zealand as fair yeah. trade? Yeah, it's like carrots, orange orange carrots. I mean, uh, there's a, there's a whole there's a whole kaleidoscope of range of carrots out there, but we're told that the orange ones, that's the ones you're going to like. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I, I, I've only ever seen orange <laughs> carrots, mate. I'm, I'm sure um, carrots aren't in the fair trade because we grow those locally. But anyway, um, show off your swap is the um, is the main uh, push for fair trade fortnight. What does that mean? Yeah, well, I mean, we're we're encouraging people to show off the, show off the fact that they support fair trade. Show off their swap. Um, you can go onto the website and show off your swap. It's uh, fairtradefortnight.com, and uh, you know there's a chance there to win some prizes and uh, including a. Uh, a, uh, a very nice looking uh, Mazza grinder for your, for your coffee. Oh, cool. And the website there is fairtradefortnight.com. Um, happening across the whole country. Nice one. Thanks very much, Steve Knapp from uh, Fair Trade. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Rob.